What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is my draft recap video for season six of the GBA. I am really excited to be coming back. I mean, you you hear this from me all the time whenever I do my like face to face chats with you guys. I'm always super pumped that the GBA is here, um, and the draft is pretty much my favorite part of the whole thing. So I'm really excited to share my team with you guys. Go a little bit into the thought process behind all my picks. And um, I don't really have the most fancy art and design um, because I'm, I'm a little short on time uh, to make these videos before everything goes live. We've been really quick, fast with everything. The draft was on Saturday. I wanted to give you a chance to learn a little bit about my team um, during the week so that uh, our first videos and battles, which are going live on um, Friday, Saturday, and then our battles on Sunday, I want to make sure that you guys had access to all of those um, and all this content in advance. So, uh, just doing a little a little heads up. Sorry if you were expecting really fancy graphics. That's not really uh, that's not really my thing. There's lots of other channels to have that, but I just wanted to say thank you guys for your support, uh, continued support even during the off season where I don't really upload much. Uh, I try and reserve my channel primarily for my GBA content. I thought I might try and put up some videos over the summer, but. I really like the break. The GBA does require a lot of planning, um, and that's kind of tiring in and of itself. You know, you put in a, as much work in the off season as you do uploading videos, which is why some of the bigger YouTubers are really busy and hard pressed over the off season too. So, uh, thank you for all of them for making this what's shaping up to be one of the best seasons in GBA history. the The competition is just absolutely insane. So I. Uh, I thought long and hard, uh, me and my front office talking about potential drafts and stuff like that, and uh, we're going to get into it. So let's just switch over here. Uh, what am I doing? Ah, nice. Clean. Clean. So uh, I'll talk briefly. Last time you guys saw me, I was in a different room. This is a brand new room. I switched houses. Um, I live in a different city now, but still in, still in California, still in the Bay Area. And uh, on the left, you will see my new logo, which was designed by Anima. And uh, Twitter link will be in the description down below at anima.tv. I think it's, uh, I believe that's what it is. But definitely check her out if you are looking for any art needs. Uh, follow her. She did an amazing job. I came to her with just like an idea. And I was like, I don't really know what it'll look like. I didn't know what to expect. I just kind of said, this was, this is what's in my head. I, I just had this vision in my head of something that I thought that I wanted. And I don't even know that, like, that when I put that idea to her, that it was actually going to be the right thing, like what I really wanted. And she just ran with it. Very little, uh, really inspiration outside of, I want the... I want a redone look of the SF logo, that which is uh, exactly what she gave me. It just the art is absolutely phenomenal. Go check her out, guys. Same person who did um, Mega Mogwai's logo for the Real Amaril and Hank the Pidgey's logo for the Winnipeg Aqua Jets. RIP that team. Oh man, I miss Hank. I love Hank. Hank and Mega Mogwai. I don't know if many of you guys have been around since the beginning of my channel. They were two of the they were like in the top five first people that were on my channel. I made really good friends with those two. And um, those friendships last until today. So that's enough of my backstory. Let's go over my picks and my draft. On the left, you will see this is kind of going to be my backdrop. Again, I didn't really update it much. Um, but this is going to be my backdrop for the coming season, for season six. And on the left, I will have my beautiful little gifs of all my Pokemon. Uh, kind of just chilling there. I, last season, I had a lot of Pokemon that like to move a whole bunch. This time, I just got the flapping wings on the Zapdos, and everyone else is kind of just like, yeah, let's go. Like like someone who's really bad at dancing. You ever seen that movie Hitch, and he's just like, this is where you live. Here, like you don't really do much with it. But that's like all of my Pokemon, just kind of standing there. And he's got like his flowing mane. Uh, man, if he's just like, like waggling his chain. I don't even know. He's got like a ponytail back there. Everyone else is kind of, I guess, you know what? Meltank's kind of got a little, uh, little nip action going on. <laughs> a little nip action going on there. Uh, let's talk about my draft challengers. Let's talk about my draft. First of all, I franchised Entei. I put this question out to you guys a while ago. Did you think I should franchise anybody? I got a couple of things. Some people said Ditto. Uh, a lot of people said Mega Pinsir. 
and a few people said Entei. And uh, going into the draft, I knew that I could do more good with the ideas of the Pokemon I wanted in the rounds that I wanted them if I drafted one of the Pokemon I wanted in the first few rounds as my franchise. Uh, looking back at the team I had last season, I loved that team and I loved how far they brought me. And it was the Entei Mega Pinsir offensive core that really lent me that. Now, we made a rule that you cannot franchise Megas. And we also made the rule that you can only franchise Pokemon for one season. So, I had to say to myself, what do I want to bring over? What do I want to keep? And what rounds do I think I can get things? And that was the big key in this, was analyzing the builds of my opponents and seeing what it looked like they were going to grab and then trying to grab it first and i was almost flawless in that and i'll get to where it kind of went awry first so entei was my first pick because he provides such amazing offensive pressure he's relatively bulky like that 115 hp do not sleep on that that is an incredible amount of health 85 defense is fine, 75 special defense is a little bit low, but Entei, everybody knows what can be done with Entei. That sacred fire and extreme speed is supremely threatening to a lot of teams, and a lot of the Pokemon that want to take that sacred fire don't want to be burned. I mean, there's very few specially offensive rock types. That's what I would consider in my mind. I'm thinking, like, what's an ideal Pokemon to take that? And, it, and then it's that. Um, water types obviously are pretty good um, in that regard also and so I knew that that was an issue for me last season with my defensive core in general I only needed to hit things neutrally but there were a few bulky physically physically bulky water types that really gave Entei and Mega Pinsir a hard time because if they packed a rock type attack or an ice type attack as most waters do they would have the coverage in order to take on Entei and um, Mega Pinsir. Just by their coverage and their stab. The water type would take out Entei and then they just need a coverage for So I knew that going into this, that I, that's kind of going to have to be how I built this. I want to build an offensive core that has a little bit of everything. And I think I started off right by picking Entei. And I was really happy to have him back. It's a mascot pick. He did so great for me last season. You're able to get some really clutch, uh, uh, interesting sets with him. And thank you guys for the support in getting uh, Caliente, as it was coined by Blue, the um, the play of the season. I, I'm super honored by that, and thank you guys all very much for that. My next pick was uh, Manaphy, and I had. Because of how many people dropped out of the league, even though I had a really good record, I ended up being fourth pick or something like that. So in my head, I had to think, what are people going to grab based on what some people had franchised and what will be left? And two big threats I wanted to get outright. I was thinking, uh, I want Manaphy. If Manaphy gets picked before I get a turn, though, I'm going to take Megalopunny. That was my thought process. So... It came to my turn and no one had picked Manaphy yet and I just scooped him up and I am stoked that I uh, that I managed to get him. It's just an incredible Pokemon. Um, you saw how well it was used last season by, by Nick and it's, it's devastatingly threatening. One tail glow. That's all it takes to strap this guy up. Not even investment in special attack being necessary. One tail glow and out the park with the damage output that Manaphy can do. Um, very easy to find a turn to do it because of his very decent bulk in 100 and everything. Those base 100 Pokemon are amazing. On top of that, Manaphy has a big range of support moves that he can do. He can utilize, um, he's got Heal Bell and uh, with Hydration and Rain Dance gets pretty reliable recovery. And just in general, Manaphy really does fit the needs of the team. It's a water type, which are very valuable in this format. And I think Manaphy's got really good, well-rounded capacity and great move pool to really fit the team well. He was a very big threat last season. He's been a big threat to lots of the teams. 
um, in the league format for a long time, and I didn't need to. I don't need to say much else about Manaphy. I really do. I'm really happy that I get to try out Manaphy this season. Um, keeping in line with the, uh, <laughs> keeping in line with the only having legendaries. My next pick was Cresselia, and I did this for a reason. Last season, my second pick. We're gonna call it second pick. My first pick was Manaphy. My second pick was Cresselia. Um, my last season, my second pick was Hippowdon. I picked Hippowdon because I wanted consistency. I wanted a consistent, bulky Pokemon that can um, fill a need for the team. For for that team, I needed a good, reliable Stealth Rocker. I wanted reliable recovery. And Cresselia cannot set up Stealth Rocks. That's true. But Cresselia is amazing in the bulk department he can and and fast look how fast this is for such a fat mon 85 base speed and really good move pool um the psychic typing in and of itself is not fantastic however the issue with psychic typing on a lot of other pokemon is how much damage you're going to be taking from u-turn and omnipresent knockoff and uh you know pursuit trappers that's a big issue in this league. However, dark types are few and far between, so pursuit trapping is not as big an issue here as it might be in the OU metagame where everyone can pack Bisharp, for example. U-turn, yes, U-turn is around and U-turn is an issue, but U-turn is an issue for the momentum and it's not a super hard hitting attack outside of, you know, like a, a scissor. And so Cresselia won't be taking that much even though it's super effective hits. Its bulk is just so great 120 120 130 it can go on either side of things it's it's really it's a great pokemon to fill that need for the team i wanted early to just say i want a defensive pokemon that can be whatever i need it to be on any given week based on the threats on the team so that's why i got cresselia um that was much of the same reason why i got blissey last season um but blissey only really provides that purpose for special attackers and unfortunately, the lack of potential offensive opportunity makes Blissey a big setup uh, problem for me. Cresselia does not have that because Cresselia can uh, really put on some hurt in the offensive department with some damaging Calm Mind sets. So, got Cresselia there. Looking on to my next pick, um, my next pick was going to be Mega Venusaur to create a Firewater Grass Cord that was... I think probably one of the most devastating I could possibly imagine. Entei Manaphy Mega Venusaur. Think about that for a second. That is terrifying. Unfortunately, the pick before me, Nick took Mega Venusaur. And I was gutted. Heartbroken. Um, oh, actually, I'm sorry. That happened prior to Cress. The pick before Cress. Was, Cress was going to be Mega Venusaur. Um, and then Crest was going to be my third pick. When Mega Venusaur got swooped up, the pick right before, remember, you've got you got to pick on the fly. We don't have a whole lot of time here. So I just said, I'm ready to pick Crest as my next Pokemon. I'll pick Crest next. I have a pseudo wheel. Uh, being fourth pick, there's only, what is it, uh, six picks in between my next pick as opposed to, you know, having to wait. 11 12 like some of the middle people do so uh, I was pretty confident I could, if I Wanted to get crest in the third round that I'd be able to um, Looking at the other people's builds. They didn't seem to have set up a need for Cresselia at the time uh, The Piratidas had um, Hippowdon. I'm like they're not gonna try and get crest as their second third pick so I felt safe just out at getting it third round, but I had to get it second round because I, I just wasn't prepared to get sniped right before my pick. Um, so my next pick ended up being Zapdos, and the hilarious thing here is that that pick was what Nick's very next pick was going to be. So we apparently had real we had eyes on similar prizes here, and um, I think it shows a lot of people. I was looking at the stream chat; a lot of people were saying that. Nick had a really powerful draft. I was seeing people, thank you for this, by the way. A lot of people were saying that they really liked my draft, too. And I, I gotta agree, I like Nick's draft a lot. And uh, it makes sense that he had his eyes on Zapdos. Zapdos has gone sooner and sooner, almost every single round, since it started joining the GBA in the draft format. Um, it wasn't in Season 1, I believe. It wasn't released yet because we didn't have Poketransfer and Poketbank. 
Zapdos is great. Zapdos has been great. And one thing I want to remind people is that the usage that we see now is based on a metagame that has developed uh, since the release of Gen 6 and since we've seen the rise and fall of specific threats in each metagame. Zapdos has been an OU Mon for a long time. And it happens to be UU right now due to certain threats kind of pressuring it out. But Zapdos is a great Pokemon. It's got 125 special attack, which is amazing. It's got 100 speed, which is amazing. As far as offensive threats go, that could be enough right there. But its main niche is as an incredible defensive electric type, of which there are very few in this metagame. Electric flying is great typing, and I... I saw Zapdos as being a threatening defogger hazard removal that I can bring every single week and that I think is huge in the GBA draft format metagame. Um, a Pokemon that can bring defog but you absolutely simply must prepare for um, on the offensive or defensive side. Like I could bring Zapdos without defog but every time Zapdos hits the field you have to think okay this guy could defog my my um my rocks right now but he might not he might go for a stab thunderbolt if they don't know my item set they don't know my build if i'm modest 125 life orb thunderbolt that zapdos is hurting someone so they need to prepare accordingly last season i uh, i took latias for this exact purpose and latias did great for me um and the threat of latias was what did the most, and uh, that's going to be the same thing with Zapdos, having those really threatening defoggers, rapid spinners, etc. And so that's what uh, Zapdos brought to the party. I wanted a, a good electric type, Zapdos fits that need for me. Going into the next round, I was looking at my team, I said, I'm happy with my bulk. I mean, let's just recap this real quick. Entei's that 115 HP, you're in the 80s averaging on the defenses. Manaphy straight 100s in the defenses. Cresselia 120, 120, 130. Zapdos with the 90 HP, 85 defense, 90 special defense. With Roost, we've got reliable recovery on Cresselia. Manaphy with the rain dance rest uh, with hydration. And I started thinking to myself, I'm happy with this. Let's start getting some wall breaker potential in here. And so I drafted Nidoking. Nidoking, um, in my opinion, went later than I expected it to. The, the Nido twins got picked up, I think, by the end of the third round uh, last season, or maybe in the beginning of the fourth round, they were both gone. And it's it makes sense why. Because you don't bring Nido King or Nido Queen every single week, all the time, being really predictable, but they can hurt, oh my goodness, they can hurt people. Um, and you don't see it just based on their stats, but Sheer Force is where that comes in. They have move pools that are incredible for Sheer Force. And it provides Nidoking especially, who has some incredible uh, depth to both his special and physical move pool. That's the thing to not sleep on. Nidoking and Nidoking are often seen as special sweepers, and rightfully so. But Nidoking actually has 102 base attack, which if a move is boosted by Sheer Force coming off that stat, it's pretty impressive. So. I really like Nidoking as the next pick. I'm glad it waited as long as it went. It provides me with a poison type to really help me check fairies. Uh, it's always nice to have um, the electric immunity. Nidoking has a very unique capacity to be immune to both T-Wave and also um, Toxic, which also great. The burn from Will-O-Wisp is not particularly threatening to a Nidoking. So really the only thing it needs to watch out for is Spore, <laughs> and only a couple of Pokemon get it. So just I, I, th I felt like it was right. It was what I needed on my team was a big wall breaker threat, and Nitto King provides that for me. My next pick, I was looking at uh, a little bit of point trouble at this point, so I knew I was going to have to go down to a tier 2 or below Mega, if I didn't want to just draft straight tier five mon for the rest of my uh, for the rest of my team, and not that that's necessarily a bad thing, some there's a lot of valuable T5 mon. We'll get to that in a second. But Mega Absol ended up being my pick. I had my eye on Mega Deancey, and it got picked it much earlier, but in the same round. So I thought, all right, I wanted Mega Deancey because I really wanted to see what I could do with it, um, and it 
fits a, un a really weirdly similar role to Absol, despite them being very different Pokemon. Mega Absol has Magic Bounce, which is amazing because it stops the potential burn from Will-O-Wisp and any other status that you might want to just throw on Absol to kind of like keep it in check. It has pitiful defenses. But in its defense, that doesn't necessarily matter because with 115 speed and a 150 base attack and 115 special attack and a great move pool, Absol needs to know when to attack, know when to strike, and know when to get out of there. I'm not going to be leaving in Mega Absol like, oh, this will be fine. No, uh, you got to assess the situation for a threatening Pokemon like this. It's the exact same thing with Mega Pinsir. I drafted Mega Pinsir last season, and Mega Pinsir very rarely hit the floor until it was endgame. Because there's no point in bringing it in. It doesn't provide any particularly good immunities to anything. You just got to find the right time to switch in Mega Pinsir and then threaten people out. And that's exactly what Absol can do, because his coverage is insane. It's a very powerful dark type, of which there aren't very many in the draft format. And Magic Bounce is great! I mean, this is uh, between having a really good defogger on my side, having Magic Bounce really stresses that people should not be in the mood to try and hazard stack against me, because they might end up doing that against themselves, and then they've got to rely on their defogger. So, I really like that. Uh, I saw that Lars used it really well last season. I've used Mega Absol in laddering a little bit. Even in OU, it does do a pretty good job. Thank mostly thanks to uh, a really decent special attack and a great move pool that it can take advantage of in that regard. So, Absol uh, looked like a pretty neat Pokemon for me, so I decided to I decided to give it a whirl as my tier 2 pick. Uh, I was, other Pokemon that I was considering for this slot were um, Mega Agron, who some of you may remember was also a Pokemon I was considering picking last season until Mega Pinsir was still unpicked in round 5. I was like, gotta do it. You can't, you can't let one of the most devastating offensive threats in, in GBA League history wait until round 5 and not expect me to swoop it when I haven't picked my Mega yet. So I picked Mega Absol, very happy with the pick and it afforded me a few extra points. Now you need to start looking at the depth of the roster. I've got myself uh, a tier, two tier twos, uh, a tier one, two tier ones, and a tier three Pokemon at this point. So I grabbed Mega Absol. Now I need to start looking towards the lower tiers. And this is where the draft really gets interesting because it's about value down here. You don't want... I have a great starting roster here. I've got six Pokemon that I could bring every week and be stoked about. But that's predictable, and as great as the versatility of Nidoking and Absol and uh, Manaphy is, and how much power I have in the other three, you need to sort of look towards the the depth of the other tiers to answer choice threats. So I picked Miltank as my next pick, and the reason I picked up Miltank so early is that I consider Miltank probably the best Pokemon in Tier 5. Um, it provides amazing support for team um, for, for teams its stats are very well placed a hundred speed on a defensive Pokemon like this means it's very easy to get rocks up even in the face of danger if you're willing to sack it and a lot of Pokemon a lot of people bring suicide leads for example that are, that they know won't be able to take a hit but they're like you know what beat me up and I'll get rocks up or something like that mill tank often doesn't need to worry about that because they'll he'll outspeed threats his abilities are great sap sipper provides me with a grass immunity to help me out with uh the weaknesses um of manaphy i have scrappy to help me if i need to deal with any potentially risky ghosts and i have thick fat if i want to provide provide myself with a little extra fire resistance i don't really need that ice resistance i don't really need that but it's beneficial to have it and more importantly, it provides really important resistances to certain key threats. So, looking at the rest of Miltank's stats, 95 HP, 105 defenses, it's up there, especially for a tier 5 Mon. Special defense in 70 is not amazing, but if you look at those numbers, you know, that's not a whole lot worse than, say, Latias's defenses on the physical side. And I ran physically defensive Latias also, and it worked out great for me. The 40 special attack, you don't run special attacks on Miltank, and so you saved a lot of points by having a really low special attack there. The base stat points are very well formulated. It's a normal type, nothing to say about that, not really important. 
Mill Tank um, is a, it can be a cleric because it has heal bell. It has reliable recovery. It's a stealth rocker. And its move pool is not bad. So Mill Tank really, one, I consider it to be the single best tier five pick. And I know that it can put in work for this team also. Um, its weakness to fighting type is well covered by Cresselia. They form a decent defensive core in that regard. Next, moving on, I looked at Chestnut. I picked up Chestnut because I wanted a grass type. I wanted something that could answer um, a few physical threats that I was looking at pretty well. I wanted the ability to have a spiker on my team, and Chestnut is nuts at, in the defensive and offensive department. Um, I wanted a fighting type. It's a fighting type. Its abilities are, sure, bulletproof is pretty nice, actually, allowing it to... Um, to become immune to something that's potentially risky to it, like a Sludge Bomb, for example. Uh, its speed is not fantastic, its special defense is not fantastic, but uh, again, this, it fits a very important need defensively for my team, and I wanted to make sure that, they're, they ha that I had that. Um, 107 base attack, and this monster learns Hammer Arm Stab and Wood Hammer Stab, and spiky shield is great it has synthesis leak seed spike so it can become a support set it can be a bulky defensive pokemon it can be um like a a bulky offensive threat it it has the potential to go a lot of different ways we've seen it used very effectively in the last couple of seasons by mega mogwai and by uh, Nick last season and I think I can I think I can do some magic with it also finishes off a fair a uh, fire water grass core for me and uh, is my only four times weakness on this team I have four times weakness to flying which is not a very prevalent offensive type so moving on my next pick was Miss Magius as my second tier five pick that I needed um, for point reasons Miss Magius I consider to be the second best tier five pick um, in that entire in the entire thing of of course this is completely dependent on a lot of different factors like what does your team need make certain pokemon more valuable than others i think i created a situation in which miltank and miss magius are both very important to my team and miss magius in particular it's a little bit more speed my team is not slow 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 i mean even my walls are relatively fast, but none of my Pokemon were over base speed 100 except for Absol at this point. I have a lot of base 100s, but I wanted a little bit more in the in the high speed department. I wanted offensive threat. I wanted a spin blocker just in case. Um, ghost typing is nice to have, and Miss Magius has access to Nasty Plot, so it's no Gengar. I know that, I know it's no Gengar, but it's got good special defense and its HP is not great, but it can it can fit and it can survive a hit to allow, afford it to get a to get a nasty plot up if it needs to. This Magius also learns a lot of really other tricksy moves, a lot of ghost types do, but that can be very beneficial in the right circumstance. So that's why Miss Magius is here. I'm I'm excited to give her a go. I haven't really used her much uh, in the past, but she fit the team very nicely. As my second to last pick, I couldn't go any later with this because I was worried as a lot of the picks started rolling in and people started to focus more on the tier four. I had to pick up Ditto. Ditto was money for me last season. Came to more than half my games, really contributed. And I don't need to say why Ditto is valuable. I think I've proved it. People have, they second guessed it the first time I picked it and they're like, yeah, you know what actually did pretty good. And it was a tier five pick. And what did they do? They bumped it to tier four. And I, <laughs> I was upset because I'm like, this was my, this is my pocket tier five pick. Everyone's got their, got their eye on something. This is my pocket tier five, but I agree. It was too good for tier five. So they moved it up to tier four and I drafted it again. Thinking, and people were like, why, why is this guy drafting it again? And look what I did with this bad boy. Ditto can put in work. It's it's a it's a style of gameplay that Ditto provides that I really find valuable to me. Um, it discourages setup sweepers. I'll, it honestly does. It's devastatingly threatening in that department, and it also provides me a switch in where a lot of the time there isn't one. 
Ditto can provide that. A lot of Pokemon, a lot of Pokemon have a very difficult time beating themselves. Uh, and you can see that in OU, where, for example, what's one of the best switch ins to Landorus Therian? Landorus Therian. And he's on every, every GD team. And it allows me to scout sets in a way that are very beneficial and take advantage of really prominent uh, abilities or move pools that some of my opponents might have. And if you find the right time to bring in a ditto, like if you weaken a threat but don't kill it, and then are able to bring ditto in on it and become a full health version of this devastating threat, now your opponent has to deal with that. So it's very hard to prepare for a ditto because you cannot prepare for your own team in addition to your opponent's team. 22 Pokemon, that's too hard. It, it's hard enough to prepare for 11. Preparing for 22 is outright impossible. So that's where the strength of ditto comes in. I think people are starting to see that now. It is an unexpected switch almost every time it comes in. Uh, barring situations where a player knows I have no answer to one of their Pokemon except their own Pokemon. So that's where the strength of Ditto lies. My last pick, I went with Regirock. This guy's defense is literally off the charts. I, I tried to <laughs> I tried to scrunch everything in on this image to make it fit, but it's it's quite literally off the charts. 200 defense. Its HP is good. Special attack and speed are both stats it does not need and are very low. Special defense of 100, I can live with those defensive stats. Regirock is a reliable stealth rock setter. It has the potential to be a setup sweeper with rock polish. Um, I believe it can work up, but you usually wouldn't run work up. If you really want to make it a setup sweeper, it's popular as a weakness policier. And uh, you don't see it listed here under abilities, but it actually has access to Sturdy now. And Sturdy Regirock is amazing as a guaranteed uh, lead to set up Stealth Rocks or to maybe get get your Rock Polish off early, punch a couple holes, get in, get out. I I love Regirock. I think uh, I would be remiss if I didn't thank Nips for really introducing it to me. Nips. Big fan of Reggie Rock, uh, and some of his earlier videos when he was really starting to grow and start doing YouTube a little more, he had the big boy man, and then he and Shady always played around with it. But I think Reggie Rock is phenomenal in the format. I think it's a great high value tier four pick, and I'm excited to use. Why did I open this water? I'm not going to drink it until I'm done with this video. But I'm at the very end, so. Uh, challenges, let me know, what did you think of my draft? I, I saw when I was during during the stream, a lot of people were saying that they really liked my draft, and I gotta tell you, I really like it too. I've got reliable recovery, I've got hazard removal, hazard setup, hazard prevention, I've got answers to a lot of very prominent threats, I've got um, unpredictability, setup potential, I, I've got uh, momentum grabbing, which I didn't really have a lot of uh, last season, but now that I've got I've got uh, a volt switcher, I've got a U-turner, I've got knockoff, which I didn't have a lot of last season. I think I'm I'm really happy with the way the team ended up fitting into to my goals. Yes, I got I got sniped pretty hard over my original plan, but I think I, I turned that around and uh, it really came together. So thank you guys so much for watching and look forward to my videos going up later this week. Uh, my first battle will be against Dan, AKA A Drive of the New York Metapods, the current standing GBA champion. And the last time we met, I was able to get the, get the upset on him that almost denied him access to the playoffs. And I know he's gonna want blood and I'm really excited to battle with my former Blue Division Rival as my first game kicking off the Season 6 of the GBA. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please click that subscribe button if you're interested in watching some of the Giantes games this season moving forward. Click that like button if you like this video and get the word out a little bit. Help me grow my channel a little bit more. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you guys next time.